Okay, today we're going to talk about how do you start your PMP preparation in the year 2024. Um, I'm going to think about people who are starting new. So if you are new to PMP's fair, just stick around, see what you need to know before you start your PMP prep. So what is PMP? PMP stands for Project Management Professional. It's a certification offered by PMI. What is PMI? PMI is a not-for-profit organization uh, based at USA and uh, it is a custodian of a lot of uh, standards like project management standard, program management standard and so on. Uh, the PMP certificate uh, is created to show somebody's, you know, whoever is the credential holder uh, to demonstrate their leadership in project management. Um, this is one of the very good certificate and recognized all over the world. So um, why should you become a PMP? First thing first, global recognition. Lot of companies across world recognize it. Now it has become a mandate to become PMP and then apply for project management role. Um, be it USA, Europe or Middle East, you gonna see the demand of PMPs rising across domains. Um, think of IT, ITS, um, clinical trials or construction. It is recognized, well recognized certificate. So if you are thinking of, um, you know, PMP certificate, go for it. If you are in such domains, want to think of switching your job across continents, this is your certification. Um, the PMI does a lot of surveys um, on and off. So last survey it did was I think somewhere around 2021. It shows that PMP certification holder on an average gets 20% higher than their counterparts. So that is another uh, thing to go for with PMP. Get some better salary, negotiate better. PMP also, if you are a PMP, people recognize that you have project management skills. So that's one thing to showcase that, you know, I know what I'm doing. Um, it's a certificate which showcases your knowledge. So PMI does a lot of networking event offline, online. You can be part of those uh, events, meet, go to the chapter meetings, um, get into annual meetings with PMI at your location. Before we move forward, you should know there are over 1 million active PMP certified professionally worldwide. Um, why people go for PMP? As I told you, one of the criteria is they get better salaries than their counterpart. So salary is one of the thing. Obviously, nowadays, PMP has become mandate to apply for any all the jobs on project management they filter on pmp so if you want to become uh, if you want to thinking of switching your jobs go for pmp at least the first criteria which is pmp and you should not get rejected just because of that um, so apply become a pmp and then uh, switch your job if you want to or move ahead if you're still there, that means you are interested for PMP. The, there is eligibility criteria. You cannot go for PMP if you are not a manager managing project. So if you are a fresher, then you should go for a certification called CAPM, which is by PMI itself. This is for people who are freshers. But if you have been doing leading project and directing project for last three years, then you can go for PMP. So you need to have a four-year degree plus three years of at least at least three years of managing and directing the project. Plus, you also need to get education. You need to know what is project management via one of the ATP authorized training provider um, so that you get the certificate called 35 PDU certificate. So these three things are when you apply for PMP certification, you need to write how much education you have, what is your project management experience, and it is project-wise. You have to write project details from date till date, um, and then you have to also write where exactly you have got your uh, 35 PDU education. If you want to know how to apply for PMP certification or how to apply for PMP application, I have have a detailed video. I'm going to give you a link um, in the description so you can go and you know check how to apply for PMP certification. It's a very detailed step-by-step -step video, so it's going to be very helpful for you.
people who do not have 16 years of education they can go for this criteria which is you know secondary 12th pass plus you should have at least five years of project management experience um, understand this five years or three years should be from last eight years from now so you could be um, you know writing project let's say this is year 2024 um, you can pick a project from here, 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 and so on from the last eight years uh, time span. That's all right for you. But before eight years, you cannot give any, um, you know, detail. That's going to be invalid. Plus 35 contact us. Go to pmi.org and start applying for PMP. You say, I want to apply for PMP credential. PMP. So you want to apply for PMP. Um, you would apply filing all your details of education, um, project management and 35 PDUs and then they would ask you to pay your fee. Now if you, um, if you want to pay your fee, you have two options. You can pay fee directly which is 555 US dollars without being a member. Um, so this is a direct fee to apply for PMP. But if you become a PMI member, then the fee is reduced, which becomes 405, which is less than 555 US dollars if you do the calculation. So it becomes better that you apply for PMI membership first. The membership is for one year and this membership going to give you access to all those standards which I have spoken about all those material like project management plus you would get templates you would get into discussions um, you can download few resources so all of that would be available to you free of cost um, the other component which you also need to think through is you need to pay some money to get those 35 PDUs. How much money would you pay varies from, it can vary from $10 to 3K uh, USD. So how, what are different options, which one you should you choose? Let's understand that. Um, so understand before I move forward, there are ADPs and non-ADPs. What is ADPs? These are authorized training providers by PMI. And then there are non-ATPs which are not authorized by PMI. So the course which you can go with, you have three options. You can go with self-study option. If you want to move and study yourself, um, you can enroll for virtual class uh, like on a platforms like Zoom or any other. Or you can look for a physical classroom session. Obviously, physical classrooms are cost is high because you have to, you know, any provider has to um, get that physical space and so on. Virtual classes, you have options to go for. If you are living in Canada, you can go for. And if you are slightly flexible on time, you can check for options around world like India, which offers cheaper uh, classes. So virtual class can work for you it gives you um, you know better uh, cost value proposition plus um, the faculty is there with you you can interact with the faculty um, so you can opt for any of this if you are um, better with if you think you are you can manage yourself you can go with self-study option now, self-study option is slightly um, difficult because um, PMI does not allow any ATP to offer a self-study PMP course. So you can go to pmi.org and go for self-study course. I think it is $6.99 or $8.99 US dollars. So just go to pmi.org and check for what is the pricing. PMI gives this pricing to their students and you can opt for self-study course with PMI, authorized by PMI. The other option, which is very cheap, starting from 10 USDs, you can go to Udemy and find any course and can uh, learn from there. Now the problem with that course is it is offered by non-ATPs. Now if that course is non-ATP, that means those 35 PDUs, if they claim they are giving you PDUs that are not valid vis-a-vis -vis PMI. 
so there are more chances for you to get audited uh, more chances for you to fail because a pmi does not certify that you are taught on the right subjects or right curriculum so that is also a question mark for all those udemy and other platforms however if you are confident on yourself i think that's one of the cheapest course to go for so these are various options if you um uh, want to opt for atps you can check uh pmi website and it gives you a listing of all the atps and the classes which they go with um so you can search at pmi website also let's talk about the pmp exam pmp exam is an on demand exam what does it mean that means you can schedule it whenever you want to um how do you schedule it you go to pmi website and you can schedule the exam at any point of time whenever you are ready you have a choice to schedule it at home um which means somebody is going to be looking at um and watching you while you perform while you do your exam or you can schedule it at any pmi authorized center these are view centers right now and you can go to that location and can give the exam from that authorized location um the scheduling obviously depends on whether the prometric guys are available whether the seats are available whether that person who is going to watch you for home at home that slot is available or not so generally you can uh, schedule your exam when you go to pmi.org within one or two days so that's how you can schedule your exam what kind of uh, exam is it let's talk about that now the exam is 180 questions what kind of questions you are going to get you're going to get some scenario based questions which would have scenarios and then you would have radio buttons when i say radio buttons that means it is a single choice most of the question 50% of the questions would be radio button kind of questions in the pmp exam total 180 questions so 50% pmi does not guarantee that you're going to get 50% on this but there are mix and match of the questions so most of them are single choice um some of them are multi choice so you would have a scenario and then you have check boxes which means you can select which one is correct or not and then it would say select any two then you would have these choices you can select whichever you want so these are multi select kind of questions um the third type of questions which you're going to get is um you know sometimes you might have fill in the blank this is very rare out of 180 questions you can get one or two questions like that um but you will get these kind of questions wherein you have to type you know probably a number or some kind of definition so be ready with that nowadays pmi is experimenting and you might get some kind of mix and match kind of questions which means when you have you know some context written and then you have to mix and match the choices so these are other kind of question expect some 5 to 10 kind of questions like that then there are questions which are hot spot questions expect some two or three hot spot questions what is a hot spot question you probably would have some kind of figure um some you know ratio etc and then something is written here you have to click and drag and drop at the right place these are called hot spot type of question fun questions so um no typically two to three kind of hot spot kind of questions you can expect um so summarizing you would get some single choice question some multi choice questions some mix and match then you would have um uh, fill in the blanks and then uh, hotspot so these are typical uh, kind of questions which you can get in the pmp exam let's talk about um the next one total duration to do these questions is 230 minutes to do 180 questions you going to get 230 minutes to do them however the questions are divided into sections of three parts um the sections are 60 questions part a part b is again 60 question and part c again 60 questions um to do all of them you would get 230 minutes however you're going to have a break of 10 minutes optional break of 10 minutes 
after each section. This optional break of 10 minutes is not counted under this 230 minutes. Um, your knowledge is tested for three domains. Let me park it for some time. I'm going to talk about those three domains in a while. Um, but understand there is, you know, your, you as a project manager, manager work with people. You should know tools and techniques to how to do things and you should know how to work with the um, strategy. So those three goals or three domains are, um, I'm going to talk about them slightly later in the video. Um, these are randomly generated questions. So all these 180 questions are going to come from a pool of probably thousands of questions here. And if you sit here at, let's say, Delhi, you get some 180 questions from this pool. Somebody else goes with you, sit together, this guy may get some other questions. So these are different questions which you or your friend going to get. These are different sets which you both of you are going to get. Let's look at the next one. It is a rating based system. So I get this question a lot. What is the passing percentage for PMI? There is no passing percentage which PMI has um, advertised or uh, told us. However, there are ratings. Uh, now you're, Nowadays your kid goes to school, right? And they get a rating like excellent or A, B, C, those kind of ratings. So I'm going to show you a scale and show you how PMI gives rating. Um, so there are ratings which will enable you, which tells you that you're going to pass ratings, which going to tell you you're going to fail. Um, so we'll, we'll see one of these scorecard as well. There are 15 preset questions. What are those preset questions? That means PMI would give out of 180 questions, there are some 15 questions which are pre-text or pre-set uh, these questions do not carry marks they are put in there to test on whether you are able to understand those questions is the english correct or not pmi keeps on putting new questions so that they become mature and become part of the main set of questions however for you you would not know which 15 questions are those questions which do not carry mark for you everything carries mark and you have to attempt 180 questions very diligently there is no negative marking so be don't worry if you don't know things just eliminate eliminate and get to the right choice so these are the domains. The questions comes from various domains. As I told you, there is uh, three domains. The first one is people, process and business environment. Um, what is this? How would you manage people? How would you communicate with people? Processes? What are different tools to gather requirement? How do you trace your requirement? How, how would you develop schedule? How would you estimate and stuff like that? business risk also comes under processes and so on quality um, business environment is typically how your seniors gonna work with you how would you work with your portfolio manager product owner to get ensure that you change with um, the changing uh, landscape of business so for that you need to understand the business environment so the kind of questions which you're gonna get 180 questions total um, you're going to get 42% in people domain. 50% uh, of the questions are going to come from process domain and 8% would come from business environment. So that's the segregation of the entire 180 questions. So a quick question, if process would get 50%, how many total questions can you expect from process domain out of 180? 90 questions very good math so now we know the eligibility criteria we know the total cost now you know what are various options for you to start pmp prep let's talk about a roadmap to pmp if the first thing which you need to do is attend a pmp workshop um, find out the ATPs which are which you are comfortable with, which you understand, um, the faculty you understand, attend their PMP workshop. Um, become a PMI member, that's the next step because you would want to get that discount from while you, you know, submit your application. So, yes, submit your PMP application, uh, pay for PMP application, 
the PMP application may take some somewhere around five to seven days because there is a verification process. As I told you, verification of you know whether you have actually done the training from where, um, whether your project experience is valid or not. All of that happens here. Once your application is valid, it stays in the state of valid for one year. That means you can sit for the exam after your application is validated till next 365 days. Um, so you prepare well with mock test, with simulation test. Once you start getting somewhere around 80% and above in good test, then you schedule your PMP exam. Um, you can schedule it at home or Prometric Center or, or you know Pearson Center now. Um, and sit when you think you can pass, when you start getting 80% and above and pass the PMP exam. That's how easy it is uh, to pass the PMP exam. The first step, attend a good PMP workshop. Um, you should know that PMP certification, once you get, it is only valid for three years. So um, what do you do for after three years to maintain your PMP certificate? You can earn 60 PDUs and renew your PMP certification for next three years. Um, so how would you gain those 60 PDUs? Is? Um, there is a whole video which I have put up out there, you know, how to gain 60 PDUs in five minutes or free of cost. So that's the next step. But you need to know that your PMP certification is valid only for three years. Um, and there is a whole process to remain valid or renew your certification later. So what is your next step? Um, the next step for you is go look around, join a study group, find out um, which one is the valid ATP for you to you know, start training. Um, become a PMI member and start planning to, um, you know, first of all, attend your workshop and schedule your exam. So these are your next step. Um, if you have any more questions, you can talk to me. You can go to the website kavitasharma.net. There are various options uh, for you to, um, you know, join my class. If you have any more questions, you can write to me here. And uh, if you want to start slow, then you can start with a book called Pass PMP in 21 Days Study Guide. This will help you understand the concept available at Amazon at any location. So you can buy that and then you can start preparing thin and lean. That's pretty much from me. And um, thank you very much for listening in. Have a very, very nice day. Bye-bye.